Okay, hey, welcome. This is Chad McRae. If you're watching this video, it means you want to be a programmer, uh, language independent, and I am experienced with uh, Microsoft.net, uh, C Sharp, Java, uh, some C++. My interests are game development, though in my professional study or expertise, I am actually a migration expert taking old applications and converting them to new. Uh, I'm going to start out these tutorials by doing Java examples from the book Introduction to Java Programming, the 7th edi edition by Y. Daniel Liang. Um, to start out with, we'll need an IDE, which is an integrated development environment. It's a place where you can write your code and have IntelliSense check your code and then automatically build and execute your code. <coughs> Uh, I prefer NetBeans. Uh, it's free. Um, it's lightweight. It comes with the Java development kit. Uh, there's a lot of um, good good libraries and plugins behind NetBeans. However, that being said, speaking of plugins, Eclipse is also a free IDE. Um, it's got a huge community, um, but I found that it's uh, it's user interface is a bit clumsy to say the least so that's why I've decided with, um, to go with NetBeans for these examples um, what I did is I just google searched NetBeans and this is what comes up and I'm interested in the second link here from Oracle so if I follow the link uh, I'm then taken to the download page where I'm going to download the Java development kit version 7.6 uh, with NetBeans 8.0. Um, I uh, accepted the agreement which then activates the hyperlinks to the downloads. Make sure you download the correct version for your operating system. Uh, Java is a great language for cross-platform um, applications as you can tell by the different operating systems that it supports. So once it's downloading or finished downloaded just opening it up yes I'm just going to install it and I will continue this video once it's done installing uh, a lot of the uh, included installs don't necessarily need to be included for these exercises we just specifically need the Java development kit and the um, NetBeans however that being said there are um, ways that you could program and write your code in just Notepad, which is native on your um, if you're using Microsoft, native on your operating system, and um, uh, use the command prompt to compile your uh, code into a class file, and then you again use the uh, Java development. Uh, runtime environment to execute your class file that you generate. Uh, that's a lesson for another time. For now I will be using NetBeans and uh, I will resume this video once this is complete. Thank you. Okay this is Chad I'm back now. Uh, I have installed and opened up NetBeans um, this is just the start page for NetBeans. Uh, there's several options you can take. I definitely recommend taking a tour or a sample project if this is your first time in here. However, I'm just going to jump in and uh, start writing code without exactly opening up the book and looking at something right now. Uh, this lesson is going to be um, for beginners. Uh, I, I think it's it's good uh, to start from the very basics, learning what for loops are, um, how they work, um, how to set breakpoints, how to use the IDE as a whole more than anything. It's a powerful tool and they only seem to be getting smarter and smarter every year. Uh, so generally um, I like to create projects. Projects are not necessarily like new files that you find in Microsoft Office or 
or anything like that, though you will eventually create um, individual files. Projects contain your um, code, so then if you were to deploy it, it would go as a whole. You can um, implement several several projects into um, one. Um, you can uh, create projects as libraries, so they're DLLs or in Java case, uh, Java's case, uh, jar files, and and use them as resources. Uh, these are especially handy if you are creating s a lot of projects and need a common library and create these static classes. But I feel that's uh, getting too far ahead of where I need to be um, for this first level or lesson. So I'm going to go ahead and start by creating. Um, so after creating new uh, or selecting new project. Uh, the Java folder is selected, though you can check all the different um, folders and options of projects you can create within NetBeans. So this specific uh, folder has some examples of projects that um, NetBeans or Oracle has created before uh, releasing NetBeans. Uh, so an anagram game, a GUI form example, and a client editor. Uh, some Java FX with a bunch of examples. And some modules. Uh, for this example, I'm just going to go with a generic Java uh, project. Uh, project name it's kind of like a namespace if you're familiar with um, Microsoft C Sharp's namespaces. It just kind of identifies the project as a whole. It really doesn't have uh, a lot of purpose early in, in development, especially when you're just creating Hello World applications and the such. Uh, I will go ahead and create this project as a Hello World um, as the project name. Now what you'll see is that I didn't include a space and that uh, the first letter of each word is capital and this is called camel case and it's a unwritten, in most cases unwritten rule of code etiquette or code uh, coding standards and it's a, what a lot of developers uh, use to identify um, what the variable or what the previous developer was trying to spell out. Uh, in this case, since it's just a project name, I'm just uh, specifying out uh, Hello World. Uh, using the rest of these default options, I'm going to just go ahead and click Finish and allow NetBeans to create the new project. Okay, so when you start out the first time, it's going to include all these default library or uh, these comments. Uh, here you can see the package has been spelled out as hello world. We have our project tab over here that's been opened. Um, we've got uh, our main class. Um, this main class in Java is what actually runs and acts as a driver. Uh, class if you're coming from the C++ world uh, and these comments you can tell what comments are in the IDE by this light gray color uh, however you can also identify them by looking for the slash slash uh, or forward slash forward slash that way anything on that line after the slash slash will be determined as a comment now you may be asking well, why is there a forward slash and an asterisk here and then uh, some more comments uh, that's just another way um, this is useful for uh, clumps of text or paragraphs of text um, developers use this when they're writing out their logic behind their set of script so let me uh, do an example of that okay so all I did was type forward slash and then asterisk and it included 
uh, the ending asterisks and uh, forward slash. Oops. Um, now, as you see, there are other stars, but anything in between this will be commented out. So if I add another star, the compiler itself does not recognize that as uh, valid code. So I could go ahead and type comments within here, um, and the compiler wouldn't know any different. So I'll go ahead and do that. So I, I included um, that comment, uh, nothing special, uh, the, the compiler can't see it, it's just useful for any developer that comes back and looks at your code. Um, professionally, uh, there I have found that comments are very important, especially on these migration projects that I do, where the developer from say 1999 did a certain piece of logic and there's no no reason or logical thinking behind their, that decision so it makes it difficult to translate and with how quickly ch uh, technology uh, changes I'm able to um, you know grow that or change it um, instead of doing a literal translation which is sometimes a no a no, -no. Um, but sometimes that's the only way so to get started, um, I'm just going to start hammering out some output lines, um, starting with the most basic output line you can think of or that exists in Java, and that is the system dot out dot print line and then your text. And in this particular case, being the first tutorial and example, I will just do the infamous hello world example. So let me explain what this is actually doing. Uh, we are within our class, which is um, in between this uh, method, which is within this class, which is within this package. A package contains many classes. Uh, if you are a database person, uh, you'll understand that relationship. If uh, classes can have many methods, though they can only have one in Java main method. Um, this method is constrained by these curly brackets. So if you're coming from an English background, think of these curly brackets as paragraphs. Everything within these paragra uh, within these curly brackets is a paragraph. And uh, the code looks at what is between these curly brackets and compiles it well first it validates that it's valid syntax syntax being the semicolons are in the correct place the quotation marks uh, the periods and once it validates that that is okay it goes ahead and compiles it into a class file this class file is not necessarily seen within this project but it does exist if I go out to the project folder and go to the source and in the source is my uh, project folder I have my Java folder but what happens when I click this run it will take this Java file run through the Java uh, development kit and create a class file the class file is then executed by the Java runtime environment. And this runtime environment, in this particular case, just being a generic Java project, will execute within the command prompt. Or, in this particular case, since we are within NetBeans, uh, execute within its own runtime environment uh, that will display inside the IDE. So I will go ahead and do that. So I've clicked run and it spits out hello world. 
Um, this first example I believe is just because it's running the project name and then it is actually printing out what we want and this build is what I was talking about of when it goes from the code which is what the programmer writes to the Java development kit which creates the class file uh, and then the class file is executed by the Java runtime environment so now if I reopen that folder where that Java file was there should be a dot class file and it appears it has made me a liar though now if I go back to the root folder back to the NetBeans projects uh, it's just the default location for them uh, under the documents for your current user if you're under Windows 7 open up the project file or project folder and then go under build and then now under build there is a classes file or a folder if I open this up there is some resources and uh, let's see uh, some another file uh, con uh, containing information about the build but we have the project folder here hello world um, underneath uh, this this build classes build classes directory opening it up that's where our uh, class file was uh, compiled and then um, moved to so that first place I was looking was actually the source the source is what the programmer works in the class file is a binary file that the Java development kit creates and then the Java runtime environment executes and its output in this particular case is hello world but how does how does that work um, I'll start by saying that this line even though it's line 23 is the first line that actually gets executed and if I hover over these uh, keywords keywords are words that have been reserved by the language um, the system is actually a class that encapsulates or wraps the computer um, it's what grabs the computer's attention and says hey you're going to need to do this out is before I get to out let me talk about the period so instead of spaces periods are accessors accessors access for lack of better words access what that library or in this case this um, class a class is another word for an object um, what this object contains so what are all the properties attributes or any other value you can define of an object what does it contain well it contains an out method this method is a output stream and as you can read there there this output stream is already open and ready to accept output data so this um, this method uh, corresponds to display output or another output destination specified by the host environment or user and the um, using system.out the system is going to display this output but how is it going to display again we're using the uh, period or accessor and we're specifying print align print line will take what's ever within these parentheses and within the quote and print it on a new line however we can leave out the line part and the line part is specified by this ln here if I remove it it's going to print it on the same line so it's running the hello world project and then it's printing it on the same line and what happens is because the print is actually a method of the out um, parameter 
uh, it, it it's going to print out whatever is within these um, parentheses and quotation marks to the runtime environment or the um, output window down here. So I, I could literally put anything I want. Uh, numbers, characters, uh, s string literals like this example. Uh, anything is possible. If I do remove the quotation marks, it's going to throw me an error until I put something uh, in there. Uh, I can put almost anything in there. I believe it accepts all objects. Um, or print streams. Oops. Uh, that's not what I want either. Okay, so if I just hover over, you can see that accepts um, different arguments. And I wish I could show you uh, with my mouse, but I cannot. Um, starting from the top, no suitable method for print, no arguments. Arguments are what goes between the parentheses. Um, in this case, since there are no nothing in between the parentheses, it's actually throwing a syntax error. So remember, the compiler and the IDE specifically check for syntax errors before it compiles uh, the class file. Because there are no arguments and the print method is expecting one, it is throwing an error. Uh, but let's look at what it does accept. It does accept a boolean. A boolean is just a true or false value and in binary the or binary uh, true or false values are represented by zeros and ones. Uh, zero being false, one being true. Um, let's see, characters. Characters are represented by a single quotation mark and then any number, symbol, or letter and then another single quotation mark. Uh, an integer is exactly what it sounds. It's a real number. It's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Uh, integers are 4 byte fields that go up to roughly 2 billion. Um, longs are the same as long integers. So they are an 8 bit field or 8 byte field, excuse me, that uh, you know, are again real numbers um, and can almost extend to roughly 32 billion. Um, floats and doubles in this case are um, numbers that have decimal points in them and these could be currency fields so like one dot 3.2 would be $1.32 or uh, 15,550 and one cent. So that would be 1.5050.5 uh, zero zero zero. if I remembered what number I was using. Um, they are again um, numeric types with decimals and uh, you know, they, they're related to integers and longs where uh, doubles are up to approximately um, two, 2 billion. So that's, that's actually, um, it, their size is from negative 2 billion to f uh, 2 billion, which is approximately 4 billion. Um, and then floats are more precise rounding um, variable types and they are slightly larger. So I, I've written a string which is uh, represented by double quotation marks and then literal text string between the two quotation marks. Uh, I should be able to put any integer feel or anything, almost anything I want within um, that those parentheses. So as you can see the uh, red squiggly underline did disappear. Um, it is accepting this 
number one two three four five six as an integer field and the reason I know that it is an integer is that it is less than uh, two billion so if I run this instead of displaying hello world it should display this number that is within the parentheses one two three four five six okay so now what is a string I've d explained what integers uh, floats longs and doubles are but what what is a string a string is a literally or literal um, concatenation of characters um, within a statement within double quotation marks so to make this a string right now it's an integer I could actually make it a string simply by placing quotation marks around the numbers okay so there's no syntax error if I go ahead and hit, hit run we should get the same output okay and there we go one two three four five six now here's the difference between using strings and those other numeric types in applications if you are doing math or arithmetic or some kind of calculation on a numeric field you want to use the numeric variable type once you put it into a string it is nearly impossible unless you use a parse routine which is way advanced for what I want to get into today so since we are not doing any math to this type uh, or to this number one two three four five six it is okay to leave it in a string but let's let's move on from just the simple dot out dot print method which only displays um, what what you wanted to within the output window and let's start talking about implementing these variable types into variables and um, other types of um, attributes to expand our application. Okay, so uh, if I run an empty project, remember how I told you that this is a comment and it won't do anything? If I run this program now, it will still um, check the syntax of the class validate that's okay create the class file to be run by the Java runtime environment and then display what it's supposed to which are within this paragraph or within these curly brackets and because now nothing except comments are within this uh, these curly brackets within this method nothing should display except for the build successful um, message okay so nothing is displaying um, let's start by creating our first variable type a string now remember the strings are within quotation marks and when we did that print line it was a literal print of whatever we had within those quotation marks literally anything we put in there so we are going to create a string that uh, has our name in it okay so there we go uh, as you probably saw I started out by typing in lowercase s uh, that's a topic for another day but in Java strings string variable types are specified with a capital S and when I hover over this you can see uh, some information about the string uh, there we go on in the second sentence all string literals in Java such as ABC are implemented instances of this class and as you can see a string extends an object which implements serializable comparable and character sequence uh, those are all topics for another day but it's important to note that a string is an object.
okay? Now, what is first name right now? Right now, uh, our string that's uh, spelled out by first name is represented by nothing. But by writing this line, line 23, we are allocating memory in our computer's um, non-volatile memory, or RAM, um, the f uh, number of bytes that a string takes. If a string is longer than the number of bytes that a string normally takes, uh, the runtime environment will uh, grab that extra memory in the heap and store it for us. So right now our first name doesn't represent anything. So let's go ahead and initialize it and, uh, by our first name. Uh, so in this case, my first name is Chad. And to initialize, we use the equal sign. Uh, kind of like math, whenever you're writing those algebraic equations and you write x equals 3. However, remember, a string is within quotation marks. Okay. So I have written first name, which is our, our variable, and then I write first name is equal to Chad. But why am I getting this red squiggly, you may ask? Uh, we are expecting a semicolon. That's a line ternary operator. That's saying that's, that's the it for this operation. As soon as I add the um, semicolon, the syntax error goes away and we're good. If I go ahead and execute this uh, application now, I don't have any output. I don't have any input. There's nothing to actually display. So it'll actually look the same as when we executed with just the quote uh, comments. So now how do we see our first name come in the output window? Well remember that system.out.println uh, method that we used to print out hello world and then one two three four five six we're going to do the same thing and then once we get to this point remember we need to add the parentheses and the IDE is kind enough to add this ending or closing parentheses and then we need to add our semicolon okay so there we go now Notice I'm using print line instead of print. I want to add a line um, instead of write on the same line as we were seeing. However, if I remove that line, it should be a syntax error because print dot print does not accept um, null arguments. Null being nothing. So there we go. I'm going to go ahead and add those lines back. And uh, if I run this now, it'll just print out an empty line followed by the build successful message. Okay, and so now we have our empty line in that. But how do we get our first name or our variable, our string variable that's um, been initialized to our first name to be displayed within our output window? Well, we can simply plug in our string variable. But how do we do that? We could do it in two ways. We could spell out exactly what we did in our, or how we initialize our string. But that's inefficient since we already have that memory allocated in our string variable. So instead we can simply put our variable name within the uh, parentheses not the quotation marks and the runtime environment will look at memory using a pointer and pull out the value from that memory address and then display that value so there we go uh, the IDE is highlighting our first name variable uh, in all of its instances um, we can look and see that our first name is a string, which we know by that. 
uh, we can look at what the print stream accepts in this case it accepts a string and uh, if I run it it should display chat and there we go so uh, now we have our uh, first variable being initialized by our first name our first name being represented by the variable type or variable name first name and then it's being print out in our output window now what if we want to say hello to ourselves um, we can either create another variable a constant that never changes and that says hello or we could actually implement it within our print line method so let's go ahead and do that because that's something you haven't seen so to create a string we need to put it within quotation marks okay so there's nothing between them now but we're saying hello to ourselves so I'm going to write hello in between the quotation marks okay so now it says hello first name and as we know first name is initialized to our actual first name or whatever we programmed here uh, but we have a syntax error and if we look at the syntax error it's saying that it's expecting a parentheses and then a semicolon however we do have that here so why isn't it working well what it the difference between um, human eyes and the computer is that we can actually see that we are missing a uh, uh, addition or a plus sign between our hello string literal and our variable so if I add that it should clear up our syntax error and there we go so this is saying take this string literal whatever I put here and this and then display it down here now if you notice neither our variable nor our string literal have a space so if I run it it will just combine the two in that camel case I was explaining earlier so there's no space there we can add it to our string literal and then all our um, problems are solved So there we go. Our first application is saying hello to ourselves. Um, let's see, I've been doing this video for about 20 minutes. I think that's a bit long. I, I might have dove a little too deep, but this is the first video. Hopefully you stay with me and I can really ex help you explore and learn programming. So thank you for joining me for this tutorial.